welcome back to today's video in the archives. Now St Helen's Archive Service is truly a borough archive, holding many fascinating records from right across the borough, including Haydock, Newton Willows, Billinge, Rainhill, and Rainford, and everywhere in between. So the unique and fascinating heritage can be explored here in the archives. And today I would like to share with you uh, some of the documents that relate to uh, coal mining and what we're going to be looking at specifically will be within Newton Willows. But also let me, let me remind you uh, that the majority of the records that we do hold here in the Gamble Building can be accessed by anyone who would like to research local records and the link will be at the end of this video. Okay, so for, for, for today's theme, like I just mentioned, it will be looking at the coal industry within living memory uh, relating to a specific colliery within the borough. Uh, so historically, coal mines were in abundance around the borough and it was one of the main ways that people earned their living, in fact probably the main way that people earned their living within St Helens. But after many, many years of mining, it was in 1984 that there were just three pits still open across the borough. So Bold, Sutton Manor and Parkside Colliery in Newton. Uh, the National Coal Board announced that small mines would be closing but the National Union of Miners, led by Arthur Scargill, alleged the government had a long-term strategy to destroy the industry. And it was on March the 12th, 1984, that the NUM declared a national strike and call for action uh, from members in all coal fields. And people stopped working all mines to protest to keep the mines open across the borough. And I do have a quote here from the local ex-miner uh, after the uh, pits were closed, said it's hard to understand how little people had. I had to stay at home with the kids while my wife went out looking for work. There wasn't a lot to go around everyone in the community, but people did share what they had. So today, the specific colliery I'll be focusing on, like I said, will be from Newtonley Willows, so it'll be Parkside Colliery. So many people might know this already so Parkside opened for business in 1959 and it was the last coal mine to close um, in St Helens so it ceased operation in October 1992 finally closing its doors in 1993. Parkside colliery was actually a very modern colliery which was thought to have hundreds of years of coal beneath the surface and we will now look at items relating to that specific colliery so we will start off with the items above here. So we do we do have a, a variety of collections that contain records relating to Parkside. So these first few photographs here relate to coal mining at the beginning of operations at Parkside. So they do date back to 1957 uh, and these were actually kindly donated to us by Ian Winstanley and Jeff Sim. So the first one here is showing the surface layout of Parkside dating to 1957. The second one is showing the men involved, I think, somewhere uh, in the moving of the headgear of Parkside Colliery. And this one's very similar as well, showing the underground tunnel. So headgear was actually a large metal structure used to lift the coal up the mine shaft from the coal face. So we're very lucky to have these photos. So there's a photograph here of the entrance to Parkside. And I'm sorry, if I just turn that as well, that is what Parkside Colliery looked like. So there'd be the pit head and the offices. So now this book here uh, was written by Jeff Sim, and it's an interesting account about Parkside, and it's titled, it's full title, Parkside Colliery, the birth, life and death of the last pit in the old Lancashire coal field. Now there are, there are actual copies of this book available that you can loan from St. Helens Library Service, but well, this is a separate copy that we keep here in the archives for, for preservation for future generations. Okay, so the next items here show later operations. Now, this one I thought was very, very good because it shows um, a lot of the uh, booklets and literature that they had um, within the colliery. And and also the health and safety, so notes on spontaneous combustion in coal mines. 
and also um, we're very lucky to have two of the meal vouchers that the um, coal miners would have had during their time at Parkside. And so these photographs here are uh, photographs of the pit head and offices. Now these date back, it, it, these are later on, so the first ones were 1957. Now we've jumped ahead a few years here and these date to 1984 and 1983 when it was in full operation. Now Parkside closure, so there were many planned protests at Parkside as it was nearing its closure. So a group of women called Women Against Pit Closures were instrumental in this protesting. Now these photographs were taken for the St Helens reporter and showed the group at the Parkside. Yeah. So the, the women, the women against pit closures group. Okay, and we're also very lucky, lucky to have a leaflet here. Okay, from the women against pit closures Parkside Pit Camp, which in detail explains why the closure of Parkside influenced the community and beyond. So I will quote. Okay. Lancashire women have been fighting for your future at Parkside Pit Camp since the 18th of January 1993. We, the women of Parkside, know that there will not be an economic future for this country if our coal industry is destroyed. The management attempted to finally close Parkside Pit, pit sorry, by filling in the pit shaft and capping it. This would have meant that the pit could never be reopened and the site would have been cleared for redevelopment. On Monday, October the 4th, women chained themselves across the drive-in in front of the security barrier and succeeded in stopping lorries carrying stone, sand, cement and machinery to be used in the final capping. On Friday the 8th of October, the, the British coal management turned off all power to the pit and, and evacuated the site. <clears throat> During the early hours of the following morning, about 2.30am, riot police plus backup units surrounded the pit camp. They proceeded to violently remove the chains and metal rope from the drive. And at that time, there were five women and three men on the line, two of whom received injuries during this assault. We will not be intimidated and we will continue to fight. So this next photograph actually shows the women who delayed the capping um, and chained themselves to the entrance. So all these would be the protests against Parkside. Now this photograph here is a black and white photograph showing James Cornts, who was the mayor of St Helens at the time, and um, held by a Labour group presentation to women against pit, pit closures at Parkside Colliery. So it was in 1993, during the prepared closure, a group of four women, so Doc Kelly, Elaine Evans, Leslie Lomas, and Anne Scargill, who is the wife of Arthur Scargill, posed as school teachers on a tour of Parkside, smuggling themselves underground with their bras stuffed with provisions. Once they were underground, they refused to resurface and stayed there for four days, finally resurfacing on the 12th of April, 1993. This protest was named as an Occupy protest, and it was so famous that the event was later turned into a play called The Queens of the Coal Age, by actress Maxine Peake, which was dramatised on BBC Radio 4 in 2013 and performed at the Royal Exchange Theatre in 2018. But unfortunately, despite the strikes and protests, Parkside continued with its closure in 1993, showing, um, oh, and then finally demolishing in 1994. So this, this one here shows the very, very last day again with the women against pit closures camp protesting against its closure. And these last few items that I've got here is quite a few sad photos really because it was finally the, the, the demolition of Parkside which was in 1994. And it's a step by step photographs of its demolition. So 
we hope that the items that I've shown you today display how we are preserving the stories and memories of local events across the borough. So if you have any suggestions for future topics that you would like us to cover, then please get in touch or just leave a comment at the bottom of the video. Uh, so thank you again for watching today's video from the archives. Please follow St Helens Libraries on social media, so Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, for information and updates and also more events from our fabulous library staff. Thank you, take care, goodbye.